Welcome back to the channel guys. We're back over here at the 1928 historical house where we got quite a bit to do and we're actually being able to start some of it today. We're waiting on materials and knocking out some small jobs in the meantime. But uh, we got an extra wide jam that we got to trim out today and it's a little tricky. Not too hard, but I want to share it with you because you'll pick up some tips and tricks along the way, I believe. So let's go ahead and head on back there and knock this out. If you remember, we opened up these uh, jams right here to bring everything to our blue level line and we're going to be working off that line. And then if you also remember, if you caught the video where we went ahead and routed all of this white oak flooring. Now completed that it's installed so now we can actually start looking at installing some trim which is why I'm here you, you probably knew that right so we got these jams right here there was originally going to be some pocket doors in here so that's why that space is there but they went ahead and you know scrapped that idea and now this is just going to be a solid piece but the problem is this is about 14 inches wide for this jam and 1 by 12s are about as big as it goes for actual wood products. You could get a 1x16 MDF, but they don't do MDF on these kind of projects. And thank God, because I don't like MDF. So to solve the issue of this being too wide, I went ahead and got some plywood. And what I ended up getting, because this opening right here is, it's about nine foot high, I went ahead and got some 10 foot plywood. They do make it, it's 10 by four. And I'm gonna go ahead and wrap that and cover up that jam. And to solve the issue, of showing the veneer edge where you could see that it's a plywood. I went ahead and got some edge banding. So that's how we're gonna handle this. And I know how some people feel about edge banding. They say it's weak and it, it doesn't adhere and you're gonna have problems with it later. You know, I've experimented with it and that's really not the case. If you install it, apply it the right way, put enough heat on there to melt that glue and cut it with the edge banding tool, you can actually get a really good result. And since we're only gonna have a quarter inch reveal showing on that edge band, I think it's gonna be just fine. So it's gonna be this opening right here that we need to wrap a jam inside of, and then that one right there as well. And this one I think is a little bit smaller. Let's see, this one is, yeah, right at 12 and a half. But again, there isn't a one by board that is wide enough to accomplish that. So we're gonna handle it the same way. Yeah, all the other ones are pretty much standard. We can get them out of one by eights, one by twelves, and one by sixes, I think, for even some of them. But that's enough yapping. Let's make some things happen. I should trademark that. I didn't even know that was gonna rhyme. Thirteen and three quarters. Thirteen and three quarters. Thirteen and three quarters. And I'll measure this in several different locations because you never want to just take one measurement and just assume that this is perfectly plumb and doesn't taper. So I'm going to get this measured out, figure out exactly how I need to make these jams. And then that's the benefit of the track saw too. If it does taper, then I can set up the track for a taper. All right, looks like we've got 13, actually we're just gonna call that 14. And over here on this side, we go to 14 and a quarter. So we'll definitely um, take note on that for this top header jam. And that means this is probably 14 and a quarter as well. And that will taper down to 13 and three quarters, which I already notated down there. Out of these three pieces for this jam, this side right here is the only one I can rip straight at 14 inches. This side will go from 14 to 14 and a quarter. Then we'll go this side over here, 14 and a quarter to 13 and three quarters. So quite a bit of variance going this way. But once I adjust my cuts for it, you'll never even see it. So the casing will just wrap right on top of that and this will be good to go. So since this sheet is 10 foot long and my long track is just over eight foot, what I'm gonna have to do is join my long track with my short track and that'll give me plenty of coverage to make it all the way across. Thank you. 
This part's a little tricky. There is a little attachment part that, you know, links these together so you don't have to hold it with your hand. I don't have mine though, so we're holding it with our hand today. So as long as it's straight, it's good. I just gotta kind of make sure this transition here is good, which it appears to be. So I'm gonna send it. So you got a nice clean cut there all the way down. And the next step would be edge banding. Then we're gonna start edge banding this first board here. We just got it propped up in between these two stacks of trim. And then we got the iron over here heating up. And he's just gonna lay it on there. And it has adhesive on the back. It's just gonna melt right on. So we've got 13 and three quarters down here and then 14 and a quarter up here. So a solid half inch um, out of plum. So I've got to measure the length of this, cut it down and then set that up. So I get that same exact um, adjustment on it. So 103 and a half minus three quarters gives us 102 and three quarters. All right, so this side is pretty plumb. Yeah, that's good. So let me see what side tapers out because that is going to be important. Yeah, so this is the side that's definitely out of plumb. So this can be a straight cut and then I can get my track saw to taper out at this um, half inch increment that it was off on the left side. So since my right side is straight and plumb, I can go ahead and use that straight cut and then taper off this way. So this will be my bottom here. So I'm just gonna take this piece right here and write a T on the back of it. And that's for the top, because that tapers bigger towards the top. And I'll give this to John so he can edge band it. So while he edge bands that next one, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the header and it's gonna be the same exact process that I showed you on this tapered left leg here. So we've got all of our parts and pieces for this opening here, they're all good to go. What we need to do now is go ahead and install it. We're gonna do things a little bit different in this situation than we typically do a cased opening, building a jam for it like this. And what I mean by that is typically, we would have our two legs and then our header sitting on top of those two legs. We would then nail in our header into our legs. In this case, we're not gonna do that because the tolerances are so tight. And what I mean by that is I keep going back to that blue line up there. That blue line, I need my header jam to be all the way up as far as it can go. Because if you follow that line, that's what these do over here. So I want this to all flow into one. So when we do our casing, we can do our quarter inch reveal and it's gonna be dead on. So typically we would, you know, have some shims up there or we wouldn't build it so tight of a tolerance so we can like nail it together and we would have some wiggle room to like wiggle it in there. Not so in this case for that reason I just said. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna go ahead and install this and we're not even gonna shim anything from the top so it can stay up there on that line. And we're not even gonna shim anything from the side because I checked this out and everything is pretty much dead on plumb and dead on level. So that's plumb right there. This side was plumb, I checked this earlier. So everything is good to go. And then this right here was actually 
dead on level as well. Thankfully in this situation it is the case because like I said we're referencing that line. All right. So as you can see, whenever he put those pieces in, they kind of had a compression fit or a pinch fit that made this super tight and pushes this all the way up where we need it. So this is not going anywhere. And as a matter of fact, I can still drive a nail in from each side and kind of tack that in just to secure it. But yeah, this is held up, it's in position, nice tight fit, everything looks clean and uh, we're gonna go ahead and install this. So before I start nailing this off, there's one really important thing I need to check and that is my clearance on my jam to my drywall. You know, you can make these things flush or you can make them overhang the drywall just a little bit, but you cannot make them too short. So in this case, I made them overhang just a little bit because I know on the back of my casing, I'm gonna have a back band that'll hide any of that and I'd rather not mess around with you know, the tapers that I had to make and have one short, it would have just been bad news. So here's what I mean by that. I've got a piece of casing right here. This is the casing that we're actually gonna use here. And if I made my, my jam too thin, so, you know, the width here is about 14 inches. Let's say I made it like 13 and 7 eighths. You know, there's gonna be a gap between the jam and between the casing because it's hitting the wall before it can touch the jam. So you'd have a gap about like that. And that's, you know, you could feel that obviously, but no one wants to do that. We want this flush look right here. So that's what we're going for. And the, the benefit of making it a little bit bigger than smaller is you don't have to worry about that gap. But a gap you do have to worry about is this gap back here. But the casing that we're using in this case is gonna have a back band on it. So that's one of the reasons I made this just a hair bigger than the jam. So that back band, if this is hanging off, like I'll show you, I'll put this here and then we'll come look over here. And yeah, this, I mean, it's so minuscule, but you know, you do have a, a tiny gap there. Well, we're gonna have our back band that's gonna cover that and you'll never see it. So, you know, these tolerances, they're, there's something to think about because if you make this too small and then you go to case it, it's like, ah, oh, you know, I can't grow this board now and then I have to recut this and waste material. So that's what I'm checking for. Checking for flushness here, or if I'm a little bit bigger like I am in this case, I want to split the difference on my jam. So I like to take this. Every carpenter should have a flooring mallet because this got some heft to it and this big rubber face. And I just tap this thing around. Just a tap, tap, tap a -roo. Go to your home casing, I mean jam. <laughs> so I just go around with this mallet and just tap it in, making sure everything's good on my clearance. And then making sure, especially up here where these meet, that those are flush where they meet up. So I'll just tap these around, get them in place, and then we can shoot it. So there we have it guys, we have our extra wide jam installed, which is a big moment for us because that means tomorrow we can start making plinth blocks and then we can start running casing and then get to the fun part, the part I can't wait for. This entablature up here is gonna be so fun. Um, yeah, so you saw how we did that. We took some 10 foot plywood. They do make, they do make, I think even 12s at plywood company. They make. 10 by fives and 12 by fives, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, we got some 10 footers. 
ripped them down. We adjusted for the tapers on our jams on each side of the drywall and we cut those using the track saw and then we edge band the sides so we've got that nice smooth uh, crisp transition when we put our casing on a quarter inch of that will be revealed and it'll look super nice and this is all um, birch it's like a grade birch so it's gonna all get painted but that's gonna wrap it up for this video guys let me know if you have any questions hopefully you enjoyed this simple install and other than that we'll catch you guys on the next video